Hi, this is lesson number 10 on probability. And in this lesson, we study the probabilistic distribution for discrete random variables. Let me give you a simple example of a discrete random variable. Let's say we roll a die and define the random variable x to be the value or the face value of the die that we observe. Okay? And that value that we observe when we roll a die could be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. This set that contains all the possible values that the random variable x could take is called the support. I'm going to use the maybe script x to denote that set. And that set is the support of the random variable x. So by definition, it's the support of a random variable is the set containing all possible values that the random variable could take. But what I can do now is, for each value in the support, I could assign a probability mass. What I just said is, I could find the probability that the random variable x taking a value of 1, and since I have a fair die, that's going to be 1 over 6. And the probability that the random variable x could take a value of 2 is again going to be 1 over 6, and so on. And the probability that the random variable x could take a value of 6 is 1 over 6. Another way to write the probability of x equals 1 is p of x of 1. And this one, p of x of 2. And here I can write this as p of x of 6. So for any x in the support, I can find p of x of little x to be 1 over 6 in this example, for this example. That's for x in the support 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And we call this function that takes a value from the support. So let's say 1. You put it here, and then you get 1 over 6. You take 2, put in that function, you get 1 over 6. You take any value, maybe 6, put it in this function, you get 1 over 6. And we call this function the probability mass function. probability mass function or the PMF. Let me give you another random variable and let's find the PMF of that random variable. Again, let's roll a die, a six-sided die, sequentially until we observe a 5. Until a 5 is observed. So let's say the random variable y is the number of rolls needed to observe a 5, your first 5. Okay. Now, the values y could take are, you could roll a 5 on the first trial. That's possible. Or maybe you may not be able to roll 1 in the first trial, but then you do in the second one. In that case, y would be equal to 2. If you do not roll a 5 in the first and in the second, but you do in the third, y would be 3. Could be 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. Therefore, the support of the random variable y is that set. I'm going to denote that by script y, and that's the support of the random variable y. Again, for each value in the support, I can find a probability mass for y. So let me find the probability that y takes a value of 1, what is that? The probability of observing a 5 is 1 over 6. So p of y equals 1 is 1 over 6. All right. What about the probability of observing a 5 in the second trial without observing a 5 in the first one? So that means you do not observe a 5 in the first trial. 
that happens with the probability of 5 over 6. And you observe A5 in the second trial, happening with a probability of 1 over 6. The first trial and the second trial are independent, so I could multiply the probabilities. Okay. And we call this PY of 1, and this is PY of 2. What is PY of 3? P of Y of 3, the PMF, or the probability mass function, at Y equal to 3. And that is the probability that Y takes a value of 3. And that equals, you do not observe a 5 in the first trial. That happens to the probability of 5 over 6. You do not observe a 5 again in the second trial. But you do in the third probability of 1 over 6. And that is equal to 5 over 6 squared times 1 over 6. So what I have here is for any value in the support, the PMF or the probability that the random variable takes a value of little y is equal to 5 over 6 to the power of y minus 1 times 1 over 6. That's for y and the support 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. And that's the PMF, or the probability mass function of the random variable y. Now that we have defined probability mass functions, or PMFs, what are some properties of PMFs? Of probability mass functions. Let's say we have a random variable x with support script x. And the first property that any probability mass function should satisfy is that the probability that x takes a value of little x, where little x is in the support, is greater than or equal to zero. That is, for every value little x in the support of x. So this symbol simply means for all. The second property that a PMF should satisfy is that the sum over all values in the support of the probability mass function, P of x of little x, should be equal to 1. Let me explain these two properties with an example. Let's say we have a random variable x with PMF given by P of x of little x equal to x divided by 10 for x equals to 1, 2, 3, or 4. So the support here, script x, is the set containing 1, 2, 3, or 4. If this is a valid PMF, it should satisfy first condition and second condition. Plug in 1, you, you get 1 over 10. Plug in 2, here, you get 2 over 10. Plug in 3, you get 3 over 10, or 4 over 10. All of these values are greater than or equal to 0. So my first condition is satisfied. What about the second condition? The second condition says the sum over all the support, but my support ranges from 1 to 4. So I have the sum of x ranging from 1 to 4 of the PMF, which is P of x, is equal to 1 over 10 plus 2 over 10 plus 3 over 10 plus 4 over 10. And if you sum, you get a 1. So this is a valid PMF. Let's plot the PMF of this random variable. Let's plot the PMF. Let's say that's the vertical axis, and we have the horizontal axis, x, and here we have the PMF. x could take a value of 1, 2, 3, or 4. Let's say this is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1. So when x equals 1, 
the PMF is 1 over 10 or 0.1. When x equals 2, the PMF is 2 over 10 or 0.2. When x equals 3, the PMF is 3 over 10 or 0.3. When x equals 4, that is going to be equal to 0.4. So that's the plot of the PMF. The next thing I want to do in this lesson is to introduce the concept of cumulative distribution function. Or the CDF of a random variable. So let's say we have a random variable x and that x has a PMF p of x of little x. Okay, And we know what a PMF means. Now, what if I ask you to find the probability that the random variable x takes a value less than or equal to little x, where x could be any real number? Okay, And this probability function is actually what we call the CDF of the random variable x, and it's denoted by capital F of x of little x. So the CDF of a random variable is actually just that. Going back to our example that we had, where we had random variable x with PMF, which is equal to x divided by 10 for x equal to 1, 2, 3, or 4. Now, what's the CDF? What is the CDF at x equals to 2, for instance? Capital F of 2 is the probability that random variable x takes values less than or equal to 2 and the only two points less than or equal to 2 that have probability mass are the point 1 and the point 2 therefore that CDF is simply the probability of x taking a value of 1 plus the probability of x taking a value of 2 therefore it's a cumulative sum of the probability mass functions up until that point that gives me 1 over 10 plus 2 over 10 3 over 10 but also I could find the CDF for any value let's say 2.222555 okay at this exact point we don't have a probability must function maybe it's right here okay let me go back to the picture Maybe it's right here. But I could find the probability that x takes values less than or equal to 2.22255. Okay? The points less than 2.22255, which have a probability mass, are again the point 2 and the point 1. And therefore, I can have my CDF at that point to be equal to the PMF at 1 plus the PMF at 2 which again is 3 over 10. Okay. In fact, let me just go ahead and plot the CDF and finish this lecture with that. Let me use a blue color. So let's say I have this axis, the vertical axis. Let's say this is the horizontal axis. Let's have the values of x. Let's say that's the values for the CDF. f of x of little x. Let's say I have point 0.2 here, point 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1. So I have the point 0.1 here, the point 0.2, point 0.3, the point 0.4, 5, and so on. Okay, now the CDF at any value less than 1, okay, for instance, the CDF at 0 0.5 is the probability that the random variable x takes values less than or equal to 0 0.5 but this is 0 0.5 there are no values in the x-axis which have a probability mass assigned to them so the CDF is simply 0 so what I have here is the CDF is 0 all the way up until you see a probability mass so I have a probability mass at 1 so the CDF at 1 jumps and it jumps to 0.1. So the CDF at 1 
is equal to probability mass at 1, which is 0.1. Okay? And since I don't have any jump until the point 2, the CDF stays constant until you get to the point 2. And it jumps by some amount. And the amount of jump is the following. So I have the CDF at 2, CDF at 2, f of x of 2, is the probability that x is less than or equal to 2, which is the probability at 1 plus the probability at 2, and that is 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2, which is 0.3. So this jump is by, by an amount equal to 0.2 which is the PMF at x equals to 2. Once it jumps, it stays constant until you encounter a probability mass again. And the jump again is going to be by 0.3. So from here, it jumps up to 0.6. It stays constant until again a probability mass is encountered. At 4, I have a probability mass of 0.4. So this jumps again by 0.4 to get to 1. And it stays the same all the way to infinity. So I have a step function where the jump at each point is equal to the probability mass function at that point. So this jump at 3 is the PMF at x equals 3. The jump at 4 is equal to the PMF at x equals 4.